So we just opened in November, and <laughs> yes, it was it was a huge thrill, and um, it took us, uh, you know, it was a, a basically a total of a couple of years between planning, but it was essentially a one-year focused campaign um, to get the members we needed, to get the money we needed, and <clears throat> um, you know, I, we talked about competitive markets and. Portland is one that I think of as being almost hyper competitive at where we are. We, we don't have people moving in. We were the ones moving in to a place where we already have, you know, within, within less than a mile of our current store location, we have everything. We have Whole Foods, we have Trader Joe's, we have a Hannaford, we have a local natural food store. Um, so we were definitely faced with the question of how are we going to convince people that they do need this other option? Um, and it, it, it was a challenge to distinguish ourselves. Um, <clears throat> so in the end, it came down to really a couple things. And at the time, I was one of the primary people doing the marketing and doing the writing of our marketing pieces. And at the time, it just felt like this thing, like, I don't know, we're, we're going to be a food store. Well, there's already a lot of food stores. Um, and looking back at the stuff we wrote now, I see where this these things came out about how we were different, uh, although at the time it didn't feel like maybe we were conveying it as well as we could have. But um, So the two, the two main areas we kind of focused on were, one, obviously the fact that we were a cooperative. Um, we were going to keep this level of uh, power in our community uh, that didn't exist. And that really goes back to why the co-op started in the first place. Um, we formed back in 2007, and it was really, a, a lot of it was a direct response to an existing um, independent natural food store that had been basically bought out by Whole Foods when they moved in. And there was a lot of dismay that people could support this independent store and support what they thought was a good thing, and yet they really didn't have control in the end of what happened to it. So a co-op was the only way that we knew we were going to have that control and that we were going to have an organization that was accountable to our member owners and to our community. Um, and that it was going to be this economic alternative, which is still a piece that I think we could message more. And that we weren't going to send profits out of state to some you know, far away corporate headquarters somewhere. Um, and the other big piece that we did our marketing messaging around was the community and localism aspect. We just hammered on the fact that we were truly the local option. Um, we built on people's need to connect and belong. And that was a really big thing in Portland because we are a city of people who migrated to our city uh, in many, from many different places around the country and around the world. And when we, when we were out talking to people um, during our campaign, we heard that a lot. People would come up and be like, oh, I just moved here. And they, they were drawn to us as a place where they could connect. Um, so our marketing campaign, we spent a lot of time trying to build on those ideas of community and belonging. We did a lot of events um, that involved the whole community, things like we did movie screenings and um, fun party type events when we were celebrating milestones. And <clears throat> um, we're really lucky in Portland in that we're already building on a place that believes in what we were doing. Um, Portland is known as a huge food town, um, as some of you probably know. We have a whole culture around our restaurants and around our farmer's market. And we were able to connect with a lot of these other uh, organizations to help build us together. So we've had a very close relationship with our local farmer's market. Um, you know trading, I don't want to say trading favors exactly, but like we, at our old space, we stored things for them and they were okay with us tabling at their farmer's market. So we were all trying to build this localism movement together. Um, we're also lucky to have um, a place um, called the Resilience Hub, which is very much into trying to relocalize our economies and they were a huge booster and supporter of us. Um, so finding those connections and building that community. Um, so that comes to the question of why are people shopping there now? And I think the answer is the same, is that it's a community that now that they've all played a part in building it, they want to be a part of it. Um, and, and it's true, we, we offer many of the same products as um, our competitors, although we do have a lot more uh, diversity of local products, I think, of 
smaller producers that maybe can't fill the needs of a, a large business. Um, <coughs> but we actually just did a survey two weeks ago, which was lucky because it was helping to answer these questions. And one of the big questions on it was, uh, it had a list of factors of why do you, what are the top five reasons you choose to shop for groceries? <laughs> and the, the highest answers were the obvious ones that you have the products I want and the prices that I like and um, you know, those kind of, yeah, obviously type things. But of the sort of less tangible factors, um, one of the biggest ones that people checked off was cooperative ownership, which was a really happy surprise for me because like I was saying, during our messaging campaign, I always struggled with like, how do I explain this to people and are they getting it? And clearly there are people that get it. Uh, clearly we have more work to do to continue educating people around why we're different in that way, what a cooperative is. Um, so <clears throat> We're working on like our first kind of real annual report this year, and that's going to be a big piece of it. I think of you know explaining the cooperative difference and how we're we're meeting that. Um, <clears throat> so um, people feel like they belong um, for a number number of reasons in our co-op. Uh, I mean, coming off this campaign was a huge one, obviously, because we had so many people come together to make it happen. But um, there's things in the store that we try to do. Um, we've been really lucky with an amazing staff so far that uh, have really been amazing advocates for the co-op as a concept. And um, you know, our location is really accessible. People can just walk right in from neighborhoods. You can take the bus. You can bike there. It's not like you just need a car. Um, and then people have said how much they really enjoy just hearing from us, like getting a newsletter, getting, you know, seeing a Facebook post, and getting things that they don't feel like they're just being sent because we're selling something to them, that we're telling them things because they're owners and they need to know and they deserve to know, and we want to keep them up on what's going on with our co-op. Um, and we've seen a few little funny pieces of evidence in our community of the fact that we're driving maybe this trend of, a, of building community as an important part of being a, a co-op or, or, or running, you know, being in the food industry. Um, our Facebook, like, our Facebook numbers have blown Whole Foods out of the water in our town. And there's so much more engagement around the posts. Um, another funny thing that happened, and maybe this was a uh, coincidence, but right around the time we opened, uh, Whole Foods ended up painting a value statement on their wall where there hadn't been one before. And there was Facebook posts about like, come shop all of our local products. And <laughs> they were directly responding to us. And then, yeah, and uh, like one thing we've done uh, since almost, since the store opened is like every couple Wednesdays we have uh, a musician come in and play in the cafe. And our store is fairly small, so you can hear this beautiful music like throughout the store and people find it really kind of enchanting and cool. And so a couple weeks ago, one of our competitors did a Wednesday night music that they hadn't done before. And they're doing movie nights and community dinners that weren't as much of a thing. So we, we are driving trends. And I think the difference with us is that we're the real thing. We are the genuine one that is listening to our member owners and responding to what our community wants. We're not just doing it as a ploy to get their money from them. It's, it's so much more than that. So I think if we just keep building on that sort of genuineness of who we are, um, it will be a real advantage. And that's it. Yeah. Wow, Chris, <laughs> thank you so much. That's great.